The following interview was conducted with Irene Coles for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Monday, March 17, 2008 at her residence in West Lafayette. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Library. Welcome. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents and siblings in early years. I was born on a farm out in Benton County near Boswell, Indiana, and I'm an only child, and we lived on that farm. I lived on that farm until I was about five years old, and then we moved to Fowler, and I lived there all until I came to college at Purdue. And Tell us a little bit about high school and grade school. Was that large I, high school? I went to the building that's out there now that they're talking about what they're going to do with it was the building that I went all 12 grades of school. We had the grade school on the first floor, and the second floor was the high school. And the basement, half a, half a floor down, was the home ec and band and, and all that. <clears throat> It was a very good school. We had good teachers there. I wish my children had had some of my teachers that I had. They were very caring and very good teachers. I graduated there in 1940 with 12, 11 others of us that started in first grade together. So that, that was... Uh, well, how nice. That's very nice. We, a lot of us, I'm still in touch with two or three of them. There's still two or three left. <laughs> Have you ever gone back for any reunions? As a yes, I, I went back for class reunions three or four times, and my husband went with me, and we had a wonderful affair at the Fowler Country Club for our 50th class reunion. That was the last time I went back. Uh, that's always a big one. It was a big one, sure. and we had a lot of us there and had a wonderful time reminiscing. Yeah, that's it really nice. did. Yeah. I came on to Purdue that... How did you happen to select Purdue? Well, it was only 30 miles away, and my father thought it was the only school in the world, you know. I really wanted to go to McMurray College out in, in Illinois, at Jacksonville, Illinois. Mm -hmm. And uh, two of my classmates were going there. It was a girls' school. And uh, my father mother didn't really want me to go there. They wanted me to go to Purdue, so I came to Purdue. Okay. It was a good move. <laughs> okay. Tell us, what year did you enter then? What year was that? I, I, it was in September 1940. Okay. And tell us a little bit about campus life and what you what it was like and what you majored in. Did you live on campus? Yes, I lived in North Hall, which is now called Sheely, I believe, North. The, and um, I was in the home ec school. I really didn't belong there. I later transferred to the School of Science in a social studies option. Graduated with a uh, teaching license to mm -hmm. teach social studies. About at that time, the <clears throat> enrollment was probably about six thousand students, and the ratio was about six men to one woman. And that was rather nice. <laughs> it was a very different social life than they have now. You know, now it's beer parties, and then it was formal dances and formal events, you know. And didn't a lot of that revolved around the union? Was that, was that kind oh, of Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. What about soror uh, sorority? Did you join a sorority? Yes, I joined a sorority. I'm a member of FIMU sorority. And uh, many of my good friends are FIMU sisters, and I keep in touch with several of them. Good. That's nice. Where, and did you live in the dorm the whole time you were here? I lived in the dorm that first year, and then I lived with the sorority. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, that uh, there were it was it was a good campus. You knew a lot of people. People were friendly. You spoke to each other on the campus. You know, it was. You felt even though you didn't hadn't met them, you felt like you knew people. Right. Yeah. It was right. very friendly. Right. And I look at the campus now, and I would pick up my grandson over at the dorm, and I would think, oh, I feel sorry for you. You know, here was this mass of students coming out of these great big dorms, and they look so detached. They're not friendly with each other. They're just moving along on their own little path, and it, it's too bad. Mm -hmm. What uh, Did you participate in athletics at all when you were here? Did you go to no, the games? Did you go to the games, though, or anything oh, like yeah. that? Okay. You see, when when you came then, your your fees included a, tickets to the games and tickets to the convocations, and you had access to all these things. Okay, all right. And uh, the fees were very not very much like they are. The tuition and fees were very. You low. wouldn't believe. Oh, trust me, I've heard very low numbers. My fees of when I started to Purdue were fifty four dollars a semester, probably a little extra for a chemistry lab, but. Fifty-four dollars was the basic. 
I don't know what my bill was at the dorm. I don't have any idea about that. Mm -hmm. And books were not probably very expensive either. No, goodness no, not like it is now. <laughs> um, then what was your career? Did you do any graduate work? Did you go on to graduate school? No. Okay. No. What uh, did you do after tell your career path before you and your husband came to Purdue? Did you meet your husband here? <laughs> I met, you know where the varsity apartments are down yes, in the village? Yes, and I Is that true? Is that one of the first? Is that the old, would you say, the oldest apartment? Those were, yeah, the first really kind of apartments, I imagine, in, in West Lafayette. That's what I keep hearing, of, although I... I imagine so. They yeah. were there when I came in 1940 and had been there a while before that. I heard, there's a lady here I know who said she graduated from Purdue in uh, 35, I think, and she knew, and when she graduated, she lived there. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And that's when Amelia Earhart came in 35, and Lillian Gilbert came in 35 mm -hmm. as well. Okay. When I lived over in the dorm, everybody was so excited to think of, and they were talking about uh, Amelia Earhart had lived over there. She lived in South Hall, yeah. not my home. Right, yeah. yeah. And did you ever get a chance to, to see Lillian at all? Who? Lil Lillian, no, Lillian I Gilbert? never saw her. Okay, but she was back and forth on campus yeah. when she came the different I knew that, okay. but I never did right. meet her or see her. No. The, down there where the apartments are, at that corner, was where the bus used to stop. Uh, you know, the Greyhound bus. And I the could, Greyhound bus? The Greyhound bus stopped down there in the village to pick up students. And uh, I was uh, there on a late Friday afternoon, uh, going home for the weekend, and uh, my husband was standing there as well, <laughs> two of us. So, you know, it was common that you'd talk to, it wasn't sure. like talking to a stranger, you were talking to another student. Right, exactly. And we talked, and I got on the bus, and he got on the bus and sat with me, and he went on to, I got off at Fowler, and he went on to Kettlin. <laughs> <laughs> Small world. Small world. And the next week he called me up and after that it was we we dated a lot that year in my freshman year and from then on it was sure. When years. did you get married then? When you finished? Uh no, I got married before I finished school, much to my parents' dismay, but I did finish. What was your husband majoring? Was he in agriculture? He was in agriculture. Okay. And he he was in military, and of course then when we had uh, Pearl Harbor and the war started, he was in went in he was in advanced military and he graduated. We had a speeded up program with three uh, three semesters in one year, and so and he should have graduated in '43. He was a year older than I was, and when with the three semesters in one year, that class of '43 graduated in December of '42, and he went directly in the army. Okay, where did you do then while he was gone? Well, I was in school for a while, and then. Uh, after he was, well, a year later, well, we got married during the wartime, mm -hmm. and I left school. Yeah. What was the camp, what was, uh, did you go with him then when he was in the oh, service? Yeah. I transferred, I, I traveled around with him in okay. the army. Okay. For overseas. So, I, tra we, uh, he was stationed down in Kentucky at first, and we lived there in Henderson, Kentucky, and then he was transferred out to... Camp Ritchie, Maryland, which is out in the mountains, Blue Ridge Mountain area, lovely area. It was the military intelligence center for the American Army. And he was there once and then later was called back and taught there. He taught in, I'm not sure what he taught. It was, we weren't supposed to know what was going on there. <clears throat> I, could, I had a permit to come on, on, on the camp and I could go up at certain places, but I never could see the whole place. It was a hush-hush place. It wasn't too far from from what is now known as Camp David, and at that time, it was known as Shangri-La. Interesting. I remember <laughs> seeing that movie with Ronald Coleman, Shangri-La. You know, yeah, yeah, I do too. Right, I do too. Right, but no, the. Um, it was a military intelligence center. Mm -hmm. And he left for overseas. The war was over in Europe, but then later, when after that, why, he was, they were sent, he was, he had specialized in Far East geography and intelligence, and so therefore he was sent on, they were planning to invade Japan. So he left and went to the Philippine Islands 
and was sitting there in the harbor waiting to be in the first wave to invade Japan when they dropped the atom bomb. So he, he never had to invade Japan, which saved many, many lives. That's right. Did, then did he, he came back? He was, he was still over there for over another year. He was stamped down to Lady Island, and part of it, at first he was in charge of a Japanese prison camp. They were rounding up all the miscellaneous Japanese that were scattered all over the islands. And uh, on that island, they were bringing men out of the jungles. And uh, he was in charge of the Jap camp. Mm. Then after that, they, he was still there, and they were setting up <clears throat> the new local governments for the islands because, you know, the, the, the government system had fallen apart underneath the, under sure. the Japs. So There wasn't any. <laughs> they no, were it. They were it. And uh, so that was another thing. They supervised elections, and uh, that was what he did then. And he came home then in June of, uh, of 1946, I think. <laughs> I think it had been a year after the war, uh -huh, probably. The war yeah. was over in mm -hmm. August of 45. Yeah, he came home in 46, I think, June of 46. It was a long time to be gone, but while he was gone, I came back to school because I didn't think I'd ever have him back, and I knew I wanted to finish school and I was going to keep myself. So, <clears throat> when you have look that in the eye, you know you need to finish your education, right. Right. Yeah. which I did while he was gone, and I graduated. He came back to Purdue. Huh? You finished. You came I back. I came back and uh -huh. finished here at Purdue, and while I was here, uh, I've worked part-time. I worked every afternoon over in the editor's office, which is at a building over near the uh, near Hovde Hall, uh, upstairs. That was the only place they could figure out where to do it, but they had a lot of, at that point, there were a lot of veterans coming back to school, to finish school, and they were getting a lot of mail for that, and I handled the mail for that. People were, in, people uh, were, in, people were, people were inquiring about what, you know, the courses they could take and how sure. much, you know, whatever they had, questions they had and were wanting flyers and things about their work. And so I answered the mail and sent them whatever they needed. But that was my job in the afternoons. In the mornings I went to school. Mm -hmm. Where did you live when you came back? Did you live on campus? Yes. In the same, mm -hmm. in another one of the doors. Oh, we lived in the sorority, probably. I did. I, I, did. I went back. Had to, I knew a lot of the girls in the house, so I went back, and house mother suggested that I live there, so I did. Sure. So I was near people that I knew right. for that year that he was gone. Mm -hmm. Then what, what transpired next, what, but uh, after he returned? When he returned, before he returned, he was writing home because <clears throat> he had graduated and he wanted to do graduate work, so he was wanting me to look into things of where he might go, so... Uh, one of the people I went to see was over in the Ag Econ department, and Professor Lloyd, O.G. Lloyd, was the head of the department at that time. And he said, well, I think that Dr. Butts is the one that you should see. So I saw Dr. Butts. Little did I realize I'd see him to the very end, which I have here. Good old Earl. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, Earl was the new, going to be the new incoming head of the Ag Econ department, so I talked with him about it, and then also he wanted me to look into him going to the University of Missouri. Uh, <clears throat> he had uh, worked on campus for a professor named Dr. Edwin Madsen, and uh, so Ed had since left Purdue and had gone to the University of Missouri in the Ag Econ department. And so my mother and father and I drove out to Missouri and looked into the possibilities there, and it looked pretty good. And so when Dick came home, he decided that's where he'd go. So we went, we left <clears throat> that summer that he came home from the islands. We left and moved to Columbia, Missouri, and he we were there for two years. It's a very good community, and I cried the day we left. <laughs> you liked it there. I, we, I liked it there, and we had made very good friends there in the department. And uh, uh, he got his master's degree there in one year, 
and he continued teaching in the department. He was an instructor in the Agicon department. And we liked it very much there, but it seemed like a time to move on. So we came back here to Purdue, and he started working on his PhD. Okay, and what did you do when, when did you have children at that time? Or? No, no, uh -huh. not yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, for a while, the one place I worked was down in the village at um, Follett's Bookstore. Mm. Okay. And Is that in the same spot it's now? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. That's been there. Then that's been there quite a while. There's a book, been a bookstore there yeah. for, ever since I. How been. long is the university bookstore? Has that been here as long, a pretty long time too? The one on the corner. Was that where we followed? Uh -uh. Was there? That uh, that building for university bookstore is used to be a big cafeteria. It was a cafeteria at one time, many, many years ago. Oh, my goodness. Many years ago. Oh, yes. <laughs> that, first I've heard that, I didn't realize that. Oh. Yeah, it was a cafeteria, a big two-line cafeteria with very good food. Oh, isn't that nice? Was the ca used to be the camera place that was in the back. Was that there at that time, or just the whole building was the cafeteria? The whole building was cafeteria. The okay. ca there wasn't a camera place there. Okay. Uh, the camera place <laughs> was about where the Craner building is now. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, all right, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Like, because that whole place, that block was all either build, uh, was either housing or it was businesses. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. very good. Then continue on, then your husband, uh, well, after he finished, he, he, got, he, he got his, he returned here and then he uh, got his PhD in 1950. Mm-hmm. And stayed on at Purdue in the, as an assistant professor and taught classes. He taught um, courses in ag marketing and macroeconomics. And uh, probably uh, most students who went through agriculture had my husband mm -hmm. as a teacher mm -hmm. sometime. Where did you live when you first came back? And then what did you do? We lived housing? in an apartment not f about a block off of Northwestern near Mackey Arena. Okay. Mm -hmm. Were there was it an apartment building or were there mm -hmm. houses? There I understand. Were three apartments there on the corner of Allen and Dodge. Okay. <clears throat> and we lived in the middle one upstairs. And the rent was pretty high for graduate students, so the extra bedroom we rented to another grad student, <laughs> Roger Smart Mueller, Smart who lived thing. with us, and we we do Raj and and. Uh, still hear from him at Christmas time. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. You build up relationships and you keep in touch, and particularly at Christmas time is really We have time. done that a lot. With We had many Army friends, and many college friends, and faculty friends, and we, they're gradually falling by the wayside. And but it's nice to keep sad. in touch over the years. It's, it's good. Right. It's good to do that. Right. Uh, I, I also worked, when we came back, uh, did you did, excuse me, did you get your degree in home economics? No, I got my degree. Well, oh, it was in the science school at, this, at that time, but n now they call it liberal arts. So I get my mailing from liberal arts now. Mm -hmm. I, I graduated with a teaching license in social studies. Okay. I also was secretary of Federated Church. Federated Church was down in the village with... It had gone. Uh, two two uh, two denominations had gone together. The, <clears throat> the people from uh, from the Christian Church over in town and the and the West Lafayette Baptist had joined and made and joined and had a new church. And the minister of that church was Doyle Mullen, who had married us. He came out to follow at my parents' home, and when we were married, married us. Dick had known Doyle quite well because Dick had gone to that church when he was in college. And uh, so they were asking, this church had just started, and they were asking for somebody to come and work in the office. So I decided to work in the office down there to help out. And then when they decided to have hire a secretary, they hired me. So I was the first secretary of that church. And I worked there for quite a while, which I enjoyed very much. Mm -hmm. You got to know people. And oh, yeah. Things, yeah. I knew everybody in that church. Sure. All right. We were... I don't know what else you want to know. Um, then your husband progressed, and what were some of the, did go to some of the faculty functions, what was the social activities, and did you get to know some of the students, interact with students as well? Oh yeah, we had students in our home a lot. Dick would often have a classes come out to our house. Mm -hmm. We lived in that apartment for about two years, and then we bought a house on, on North Vine Street, a small house on North Vine, we bought it from a fraternity brother of his who was moving, he and his wife had built that house, and they were moving to go to, I think, West Virginia when he was going out there to work on his Ph.D. 
So Audie and Betty sold us their house there on North Pine until we had, we had plenty of room there. And we Within walking distance, too. You could walk Yeah, to and camp. Dick often walked to work sure. in that place. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. We, we had students in our home a lot of times. We... Yes, I, I I went to the Purdue Women's Club. And yeah, tell us a little bit. They about always it. had a fall luncheon, and they would they would I guess we'd have formal dances and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then your your husband progressed and then became the dean. Mm -hmm. How did, did how did uh, that happen? Was it just a natural progression or? Well, we he, was he he stayed in Ag Econ for a while, mm -hmm. though, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Did he was any other any other administration? He was uh, no, oh, not okay. here. He was always in the ag school here. Mm -hmm. Nineteen sixty four, uh, he he was a visiting professor of economics in England. Oh, did you go the, with him? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. By then we had two children, and uh, we took them along. And uh, was that for just he was at the year? University of Exeter in Devon, and uh, we were over there, and the children went to the English schools. That sounds like a nice experience. Yeah, it was good. We were awful glad to come home. <laughs> awful glad to come home. Well, there's always no place like home, but it's nice to take another look, One too. One summer, while he was, uh, when the children were young, he was a visiting professor up at Northwestern University. He taught economics up there one summer. Mm -hmm. So we rented a, a professor's house. Oh, that made it nice. It Evanston. gives you more room, mm -hmm. right? That mm -hmm. made more mm -hmm. room. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, did you interact with, we had, uh, President Hovde was the president when your husband came, he right? He hired my husband as dean. He was, he was the, pre he was the president when Dick became dean. Mm -hmm. But he was, he was the president he was when the, you came? He came in 1946. Right. I was in his first graduation class. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. In Elliott Hall of Music. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he kind of, ni nice thing to remember. Yeah, yeah. he was, uh, looked so young. You're kind of like Joe Boy College, you know, looks a little young up there on the stage. <laughs> but he had that whole Oxford regalia oh, yeah. with the yeah. little beret, you yeah, know, yeah. It, it's he just was, really impressive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was uh, he was really quite a nice guy. Yeah. yeah, and we got acquainted with he and his wife over the years right. after that, after Dick became dean. Uh -huh. uh, did you go to any of the athletics? What about the athletics? Did you go to some oh, of the yeah. athletics? We okay. love to do that. We yeah. always had tickets for the football games and basketball games, and loved to do that as long as we could. We did. Well, that kind of and Doctor how do you understand what support was like to athletics? Oh, yeah. he, he played. Was, yeah. he was a football player. He had played football, I think, at the University of Minnesota. Right. Yeah. Uh huh. And you talked a little bit earlier about Chauncey Village, but that's changed. How that that's changed even since you've been here, hasn't it? Uh, I, about a week ago, a friend and I drove around down through there, and I couldn't believe all the changes that have been made. Uh, it breaks my heart. <laughs> a lot of the things that were there are not there anymore, right? That's right. Yeah. And I, 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 there's something about progress that bothers me. <laughs> I guess I'm too nostalgic. <laughs> I like this nostalgia too, as well. <laughs> and the campus has changed a lot. Look at all the new buildings. When um, I think some of them are positively ugly. Well, they're different, different, you know. But the, and of course, that uh, when you came, were there temporary housing down on State Street or not? Or was oh, that yeah. before? I've heard about. Well, that. there were there were lots of old army barracks that had been brought in out on, and they were put in out along on Airport Road. And along, Is that what they call the black and black and black, white? Well, no, oh. those were a different ones. Oh, okay. But but there were a lot of army barracks that were brought in here, and uh, they were out on State Street and out on Airport Road all along on the on the on the west side of of the Airport Road going out that way. It okay. was just full of them. But the black and whites were about where the St uh, married student, married student, housing. Married student housing. housings are. Right. Is that about the same time that the Quonset House, which is now <coughs> Armstrong Hall, were mm -hmm. put in mm -hmm. together? Mm -hmm. And were those for class, not for... Those for are classroom buildings. Classroom buildings, mm -hmm. okay. See, as, as all of a sudden, here were all these veterans coming back, and it just really crowded the university. And so they had to really... They had know, to really find places for people to live and right. places for them to go to yeah. class. I think another change, weren't there more houses around, and they used to rent rooms out? Oh, or, yeah. Okay. In fact, that's where my husband lived. When he was a freshman and came to Purdue, he lived in a rooming house on Sheet Street, which is all other buildings now. I noticed the other day when we were driving around. He had, uh, had there was a family friend whose husband had died, and she lived up at Remington, Indiana, and uh, 
so she had children to educate and she decided well she'd come down here and buy a house and rent rooms so and then her kids could go to school and that's where my husband lived he knew her Alma and uh, well that worked out nicely his freshman year he lived in this rooming house on Sheet Street and um, had a roommate from New Jersey who was in engineering and maybe you think that an engineer from New Jersey and a farm boy from Indiana <laughs> made it the odd couple, shall we say. But it worked out well. It yeah. worked out wonderfully. Yeah. In fact, the two families be- became quite well acquainted. His, the other, the, this boy's father was a Baptist minister. And uh, when Dick and I were married and lived out in Maryland, we went to see the West Neats up in New Jersey. And they were wonderful to us. Oh, small world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. Um, how about any anything else? Uh, any other comments that you want to share about your husband? You he had students over at your house, and it was kind of a busy time. That's a busy. It was a very busy time. Right. I've, I've been a very busy faculty wife. Mm-hmm. I really have. Uh, when you're the dean, you you go to lots of banquets and you go to lots of meetings in Indianapolis with the Farm Bureau and other ag organizations, and uh, I did all that with him. Right. Would you? Um, a couple of people. Dave Fendler was one who probably knew. Oh, very well. Yeah, he, too his, bad. he had a beautiful wife. Yeah. Is she still living? Oh no, they're both oh, gone. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then you brought, you remember Vern Freeman? Oh yeah. 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 Um, he and his wife. Vern used. To, I'm a fact fellow at Tarkington, and when Vern was still around, or you know, he used to, was a fact fellow over there too. So we mm-hmm. used to see him yeah, over there too. Vern and his wife, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was your husband ever a fact fellow? Yeah, he was for. Uh, he didn't participate in it very long. And he was over at some point over in Cary Hall, one of the hall, Cary Halls. Okay, okay. And there weren't as, and, and over time, a lot more of the residence halls have been built, haven't they? Mm-hmm. There weren't as many. Yeah, when we came to school, there was only Cary Hall for the men. And and uh, three dorms for women. Okay. North, South, and Wood. Which is now what Sheely and Sheely, Dumi and, 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 and Wood. Right. Exactly. That's all. It was. Those were the only dorms. And the ones across, which is now known as Meredith, were were the X. X dorms. Yeah, which no, is that interesting. Was, that was probably the first one, one that was built after those others over that way. Right. That was the first one built after right. that, and then the other big high rises came along. Right. Okay. Any other comments and notes that you've made that you'd like oh, to share with us? Okay. You know, and then you can be thinking about your favorite memory or tradition that comes to mind. I don't know. I feel that we had a very, as undergraduates, we had a very different social life. Uh, there were many events going on at the Union. On Saturday night, so it, the first date I ever had with him, we went over to the Union. There was a dance in the ballrooms at the Union, and lots of students there, you know. And uh, the formal season opened in the fall with the military ball, and the advanced military people all had, wore their uniforms. <clears throat> um, then after that, then there were other many other formal dances, fraternity dances, sorority dances. Uh, Panhellenic dance, uh, you know, just and they had proms too. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and then the end of the year was the junior prom. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Did they have the boy? And they had wasn't there a barber shop at one time in the Union? Was that there when you uh-huh. were here? Uh-huh. Which yeah, is right, right was right across from Pappy's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was That's there right. when I came. I That's remember right. that. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, I remember that man. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the well, the the Union is, yeah, it's an interesting building. You know, it. And uh, you couldn't, with all the, the you materials add, in there. You know, during intermission at any event like that, you know, this is, there were the couples went down the stairs and got a Coke, you know. At, Nobody had very much money at that time, you know, right. and, and I wanted one Coke was about it. That's right, exactly. <laughs> I understand, yeah. Can you think of any, uh, you have a favorite memory that you'd like to share with us? And any general comments and summary that you'd like to... Uh, Make a comment for the researchers. You mean about the campus? Anything in general that that comes to mind is kind of a summary thing. Well, leave it up to you. Not, not particularly. Do you have have a uh, outstanding event in your life? Yeah, on marriage, I suppose, was an outstanding event in my life. There you go. Right. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, 
he was had been at that time when he he was uh, in the seventy fifth division and was uh, stationed out in Missouri. The Dole Division went to Louisiana for maneuvers, and he was down there for three months in the swamps. And, oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> when the division came out of maneuvers, they went to Camp Breckenridge, Kentucky. And uh, on a Friday night, he had called me, and he said, um, the general said that anybody who was getting married could have their leaves first, and I told him we were getting married. <laughs> So uh, we, that was Friday night. The next night he called and he said he found a place for us to stay and I'll be home Monday. And on Thursday we got married. Very nice. At my parents' house. Very nice and indeed. My parents, yes. my father was livid. <laughs> he didn't like the idea. But uh, Dad was great and Dick was really his son after right. that. that. Yes, another member of the family. Yeah, yeah. What did your husband do after he, did he step down as, as dean or? Well, uh, he he was dean for twelve years, uh -huh. and uh, he had always thought he'd like to go back and teach again in the department, with, and that's what he did for five more years. In Ag when in Aggie County. Aggie County. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Well, that was nice, and uh, that was fine. I think it gave us time to spend with our family. By then, our, we have our son and daughter were both married. We had grandchildren, and and uh, Dick and I like to travel. We made, after being over in uh, the year that we went to England, <clears throat> we took the children. Kathy was in the third grade and Mike was in the seventh grade. And we t went and spent, um, we left about 4th of July and then got back into England in early September. But we traveled on the continent all that time. And in the meantime, Dick was had been asked to give a paper at, uh, the International Economist meeting in Lyon, France. So we did get to Lyon, and uh, he, he did that. In the meantime, at Lyon, people from England, where we were going to go, said, well, you you better be heading on to find a place to live. So Kat, the children and I moved to England by ourselves <laughs> and found a place to live. And uh, so... After that, that kind of whetted our appetite for travel. And uh, over the years, Dick and I have made several trips to Europe. And our favorite places to go are uh, Germany and Austria. Oh, that's very and I nice. think it's because we have background there. Sure, right. What about the children? Did you, you have two children? Did they go to Purdue? Yes, both mm -hmm. of them graduated in Purdue. And both grad they both, their husbands. My son's wife was a Purdue graduate as well. And my daughter's husband is a Purdue graduate. And my daughter and her husband both have master's degrees here. And they do they live in, in Indiana? My son lives in Virginia, Shenandoah, Virginia. He graduated here in ag engineering. He has a good job with a company out of Buffalo, New York. And uh, his wife died of cancer uh, a year ago. It'll be a year ago last November. Mm -hmm. Did they have children? Yes, they have two daughters. One's still in Virginia, and the other one's married and lives in Illinois. And she mm -hmm. graduated from Illinois State in business and has a very good job. She's a controller of a, of a college at Decatur, Illinois. Mm -hmm. She has good. a very good job there. Good. And her husband is a high school math teacher. Very nice. And they're not too far away. Hmm? No, they're, they're not, not too, too far. far away, and that's our their little boy. That's oh. that's them, and they. So we have a little uh, great grandson. Oh, isn't that nice? And your uh, the other child, the other child lives. My daughter lives down near here, about thirty five miles south of here, and she's been a high school art teacher. She's very artistic, and her husband is in a bank at Covington Fountain Trust Company at Covington, Indiana. Uh -huh. Where they have that uh, restaurant there in Covington, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we, I've not gone there, but sometime I probably mm -hmm. will. Now you're talking about the beef house. Yes, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, which right. has been around for a long time. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. yeah, and they have three sons. The oldest is he's in Purdue now, and the other two boys. And one's a junior in high school, and one's a freshman. Very good. Oh, they're on the, their way. The junior will not be coming to Purdue. He'll probably go to some smaller liberal arts school someplace. And the younger boy just going home Purdue, so maybe he'll come to Purdue. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> One more. All right. Yeah. One more. Any other closing comments that you can think of that uh, you'd like to, in closing, make a comment about? 
No, unless you'd like to know more about Dick. If you want to make some comments, go ahead. That's fine. Whichever Dick, you think. Uh, what he he was um, his positions at Purdue. He was assistant head of the Ag Econ department at one time. He was assistant vice president for academic affairs, and he was dean of agriculture for twelve years. And he he was the when he went back at. In 81 to the department, he was the Hovde Distinguished Service Professor of Ag Econ. And, uh, That's sort of nice because Dr. Hovde was here when he took mm -hmm, the pain. Mm -hmm, nice, mm -hmm, nice selection mm -hmm, for the name. Mm -hmm. He has been, he was the first one selected in the first group selected for the ROTC Hall of Fame. And he is in that book of great teachers that's out there behind the union. He was in the first group of that. The inaugural thing, which mm -hmm. is really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. That is a nice thing. And that pleased him very much. Oh, yes. He basically considered himself a teacher. He loved to teach. That's, he did that in the Army out in Maryland. And uh, he, he, he loved his students and he loved to teach. And that's and, what he was able to do, which is and, nice. And, and he did a lot of writing much writing. He wrote a, when he started teaching marketing, he didn't think there was an adequate textbook. So he wrote one. <laughs> and Why I not? did a lot to help him with that. Right. I did a lot of proofreading and and uh, that book came out and hmm, let's see, it was probably about about nineteen seventy. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. No, about then. No, that's after that, before that. He was, uh, it was probably in the 50s. I was going to look that up, and I forgot. Mm -hmm. But um, three editions, of, it went into the third edition that he did. When we were in England, he was revising it <clears throat> on the side, and I we rented a typewriter, and I did all the typing for it, and... Um, That was the second edition, and then he did a third edition. Mm -hmm. After that, he was he too, couldn't handle it all by himself. So they, the next, it went to the to nine editions, and he uh, had two different people in the department who worked with him. Give him some assistance, what you need. Yeah, one yeah. was Dave Downey, and one was Joe Ewell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other notes that you want to share, or is it? No, I don't think so, no, particularly, except he was a great guy. He really was. He was, uh, he loved Purdue, and he loved his students, loved to teach, and... Uh, Worked out well for everybody, you, it, and, you and Yeah, him. it was. We had a good marriage, and, and he loved his kids, and loved his grandkids, and was a fun guy. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. We did a lot of camping. We... Uh, did it for years and years, and uh, we've been in travel in every state in the Union, many of them as campers, and uh, we've seen lots of things. I see things on TV, and I think, oh, I've been there, I've been there, and it's Lucky. really wonderful. <laughs> That's kind of nice thing. And we love traveling in Europe very much. Mm. There, I think we liked in Germany, because Dick's grandmother had come from Germany and was, when she was a teenager, was never an American citizen. And uh, we knew we couldn't go ever go there when we were there because it was not possible, because it was on the Soviet side early on. And uh, But then when I had had relatives that came from Switzerland, and so we 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 went back to Basel, Switzerland once, where my family had come from. So we enjoyed that. We've only been in Switzerland a couple of times, but we've been in Germany many times. Mm -hmm. That's nice. It's mm -hmm. sort of nice to go back and take mm -hmm. a look and things mm -hmm. of that sort. Enjoyed it very much. All right. This concludes the interview. I want to, I want to thank Irene Coles very much for the opportunity to interview, and I thank you. Thank you. Thank you.